Jasleen. Oh, someone started the recording. <laughs> so I think if you record, then it goes into your uh, Google Drive. But yeah, I'm going to have to see if, uh, let's see, where is my Google Drive? There it is. Um, so I thought for sure my lab today for uh, solid state was going to be on uh, x-ray diffraction, which uh -huh. is, you know, a pretty cool topic. Has some actual mm -hmm. good, you know, implementation. Mm -hmm. Turns out. Uh, it was actually writing a five to six or no five to ten page paper on lab safety protocol. What's <laughs> oh. up, Carlos? Oh, hi, all. What's up, man? I should say hi. How are you guys? Good. Hey, no, what happened to your arm? Uh, uh, I, was, I ran into a wall racing other people. Oh. Yeah, but oh, it's just a small crack. Oh, I see. Did you win? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the most important. You're the part. true winner. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. I so think we're just in... waiting for the MATLAB. Yes. Uh, professor's not in yet. Oh. And people are coming in. Yeah. People are storming yeah, in. We, we won't see Stoops for another. Uh, probably fifteen. What's up? <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be your thing. Uh, oh, there's my video. Well, you could turn on cool. or off your uh, webcam. Yeah, you don't have I'm to. I'm just gonna. Anymore. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn I like mine. my monkey. <laughs> yeah, depending on how uh, Doctor Stewart likes it. Yeah. Okay. But you could mine actively is engage. With the chat as well as the uh, the voice, so I don't think it's completely necessary to turn on your webcam. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the only reason we're doing it is because like we're officers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. I was just say yes. mine's on, but I have the ultimate Facebook uh, defense online right now. <laughs> Just a piece, a piece of tape. <laughs> oh. I, um, I have the I, I, I have the I triple E, you know, webcam cover. Oh nice. yeah. Let me open this with uh, photos. You guys should be able to see my presentation right now. Uh, yeah. S Skylab. Scilab? Scilab. Oh, Scilab. Never. Scilab. Never heard of Scilab. No, it's a, I've never heard of it either. It's a little meme that I made. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the knockoff version of MATLAB. Free and open source cross platform numerical and computational package and a high level numerical oriented oh. program, programming language. Mm -hmm. I don't get it. I just Dr. threw this up on is uh, here. Dr. Stuber has arrived. How's it going, Professor? Uh, his mic is still muted. Oh, okay. How's that better? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Very All right. good. Very nice. I assume I'm not late. Six o'clock, right? Uh-huh. You're all good. You're oh, early. 
Who's all here? Ricardo, Carla, Emma. Okay. Uh, I only see five. Is that it? Take. Uh, we have so far nine people in, but okay. um, I'm assuming more people will storm in. All right. Okay. And um, I was sharing my screen. It's a little meme that I made <laughs> to to kind of test um if the presentation button works. All right. It that looks like it works. All right. That's great. I was gonna put on a, a little music just like your um online lectures before, but um the sound was muted. For some reason. Uh-huh. Really? Uh-huh. I was gonna put in the, the matrix theme music, but uh it was systematically muted. Matrix theme music. Let's see what I can find. <laughs> All right, Michael's here. The bald Michael. <laughs> hey, Michael. What's up, everybody? How are you guys doing? Good. Oh, How, good. How's good. your day? Uh, I just got like two more questions to answer for this 450 lab report, and then I'm done oh. for the day. Yeah. I see. Oh. Took me quite a while to bring myself to actually want to answer those questions. <laughs> uh, oh, oh Scilab, dude! Didn't Sun <laughs> want us to use Scilab? Uh, uh -huh. The only reason, the only reason he wanted us to use it because it was free. Mm. Of course, David's here. There he is, the man. Sub up, Steve? How you doing, David? The man, Can the legend that, himself. Doing a hard work at grading the, all your papers that you give me. Oh, good. I haven't started. <laughs> uh, all right. Reva hey, Doctor Stuber, should I should I yell at the rest of your three sixty students to get in here? Yes. <laughs> if you can figure out how to yell at them. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! I'm gonna yell at them right now. No, they're all panicking and doing three twenty rip. I think. I heard that class is not going so hot. Yeah, it's ter uh, I heard the lab was being uh, uh, well, it's not going as great as anyone thought. Which class? Twenty. <laughs> At three hundred and twenty, the lab. Who's? Oh, okay. Who's teaching three hundred and twenty? Wen Shen. Oh, how's okay, that going? Oh, well, I don't know. I'm not in the class, but I heard like in person he's not bad, but he's absolutely god awful online. So. <laughs> Yep. Obviously, he needs some Matrix theme music, too. <laughs> oh, are, you, are you still doing that this semester? You're recording intro music for your lectures? Oh, I heard a, a is that of it. Is that the Matrix theme music? I don't know. I didn't hear it. It was going for just about a second. Is that it? I'm not hearing anything. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love technology? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> it yeah. always works Rip. every time. Uh, every time you need it to. Yep. Yeah. I'm just busy grading. Uh, let me try this again. I pulled it up because you guys said you wanted to play the Matrix theme music. So, who said that? Who who wanted that to happen? <laughs> yeah, if you're three, how many people are in here? Twelve. Yeah, if your two sixty yeah. students are in here, that's like not the brightest thing. I had like all my professors blast this out to me, Joe. So, just so you know. Yeah. I remember I went to uh, I went to the one two years ago, I think it was. It was before we even started 360. 
and that was a huge help. Of this thing? Yeah, it was uh, yeah, two years ago. All right, well, so, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the same thing. You'll be an expert now. I can let you take over half. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. There's no pizza this time though. Good one, Dr. Stu Rude. <laughs> Yeah, I did mention that. I said, how are we going to do the pizza through the uh, through Google Meet? <laughs> we'll just put a picture up, a picture of a pizza. My wife felt oh, right. sorry for me, so she went to Blaze. I just ate pizza. I'm just calling it BYOB2. Blaze is the shit. Is that good or bad? <laughs> okay, so, like, once it depends on the tone. <laughs> well, this is being recorded, so I probably shouldn't have even said that in the first place, but Blaze pizza is <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's that behind you, David? I've never seen that person before. Sorry. Like, all the pictures are, like, super blown up on my screen right now. Oh, uh, you're muted, David, by the way, just so you know. Uh, I don't know what you mean. I'm just in my lab. No, who's behind you? Like, I don't know who that is behind you. I've never seen that person before. Oh, don't, don't worry. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, hey, what's here. up, Kayla? Am I supposed to be able to see everybody on the right side? Hey, what's up? Uh, there's a few of us who have our webcams on. Okay. Oh, well, yeah. I see letters. There's S, K, R, M. Hello. Oh. Well, I certainly didn't expect my internet to come uh, go out. Right now. But... Hopefully, I'll get my internet back. Okay, so more people are coming in. I would say that's a good thing. Yeah, I should have made this more advanced. It's a bunch of repeats. <laughs> I just brought the bring the same old the intro stuff out. Um, that's quite a few. Hey, I'm I'm always down to learn some basics. Cause half oh. the time I forget them. To be honest, like not gonna lie. Well, my man. favorite is uh, MATLAB syntax. <laughs> it's, it's always the best part of it. <laughs> there you go. And and then thank you to Dr. Savarina for advertising. Is he here? No. I don't think he'll show up. He literally just put an announcement on web campus saying, like, oh, this is a good opportunity to refresh yourself on MATLAB. <laughs> OK. All right. How many we have? I count, like, 15. Is that right? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, do you want me to start or? Yeah. After you. Yeah. Right. Um, good. We should have said that five minutes ago. Now I got to figure out how to get my screen up. Screen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. There we go. Which screen are you looking at? We're looking at your screen now. Yes. Yeah, but I got I got two screens. Are you looking at? Uh, no, we're looking at ever. We're looking at ourselves. We're not looking at. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it gets, we can see you, Doctor Steward. Yeah, I know why I failed because last night I did this on Firefox, and this is Safari, and I think Safari is not quite as good. Let's see if it defaults to the screen. <laughs> All right, you still see yourselves? Yeah. Yeah. We got Matt right there, though. There we yeah, go. We go. There we go. I got it. I got the right. There we screen. go. Yeah. All right. Some of you've been here before. This is kind of a repeat. I didn't do too much new. I, and I usually start out with, uh, "Can everybody see me? Can everybody hear me?" Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and every time I say that, I think of this. Come <laughs> <laughs> around. Come <Gather> around. <laughs> All right. 
Anyway, I always feel like him when he walks in. Can everybody hear me? Can everybody see me? Mm -hmm. All right. And the answer was yes. All right. So we're good with that. All right. Um, so what is MATLAB? For those of you who haven't been here before, I'm going to assume that nobody is, we're, we're starting from scratch. Um, MATLAB originally was written, it was called Matrix Laboratory. And it was written, uh, it started out at the University of New Mexico in Stanford. And the, uh, there, there's a, there was a bunch of subroutines called LINPACK and like ICEPACK or something like that. And what you did is you actually sent out for them and paid $50 and they would send you this big tape. When I say tape, we're not talking packaging tape, but electromagnetic tape. And it would go on a reel to reel player and you would download it onto your computer. Uh, for those who still don't know what that is, just think of it as a flash drive. All right. So they would send you this big flash drive. All right. Uh, and then you would download the subroutines and they were in Fortran. And you download the subroutines and they were basically matrix operations. So these guys got together and started putting together a program that kind of had them built in so that you didn't have to download them. And it was called MATLAB. And eventually they sold it and um, it turned into a big commercial product that you're about to see. So as I wander through and show you how MATLAB is and what it works, it, if you're wondering why I'm stuffing everything into a vector or a matrix is because MATLAB stands for matrix laboratory and everything is technically supposed to be a matrix. All right. So when you start up MATLAB, if you've got a copy, you can probably boot it up. Uh, when you get the blank screen, you're in the command window here. And the command window lets you do a number of things. Actually, I think you can do uh, some Unix commands. So it tells me I'm in my DSP lab directory for some reason. Uh, probably because that's where I left off last night. Um, I wonder if I can check the files. Those are the files in my current directory. But it also basically works as a glorified calculator. So you can do two plus two and uh, seven divided by, seven's not divisible by anything, is it? <laughs> one, it's divisible there, by oh, one. There you go, seven divided by three. Right. Um, or, I don't know, what do you want to do, sine of uh, pi divided by two? Sure, I should give you one. There you go. So <laughs> as a, it kind of works as a glorified calculator. You can also use it so it has memory, so you could have said X is equal to, um, let's cheat and just call it uh, sine of pi over 2. And then I could have said uh, x plus x. It remembers x is 1, so now it would be 2. All right, so it works like a glorified calculator, uh, which is great, so you can do things interactively. However, it's more interesting if you come up here and you click, and I already did it, but you would click new script. <laughs> I opened it somewhere else. Let's, it opened it on the monitor you're not seeing. So let's assume it opened this one. <laughs> it will start out as untitled. All right, and have its own set of menus up here. Um, and the first thing you would probably want to do is type in, for those of you who are new, is come up here and you're going to type in some comments at the beginning, why comments, and we'll get to that later. Just, you're going to have to trust me. Uh, start out with a double comment sign and then MATLAB, the comment sign is the percent sign. So let's type in, oops, let's not type that in. Uh, let's type in MATLAB introduction. I'll get this yet. Hang on. Double, double comment MATLAB introduction. Why the double comment? That breaks it into sections. Why do I want to break into sections? Because in the end, it makes it very nice and handy. Uh, then you can type anything you want. Like this is an introduction to MATLAB as a subtitle. Uh, and I always tell students, type something else. Like I'm being forced to type this line here by my mean professor <laughs> who only showed up for the pizza, which we didn't get any this year. All right. So the next thing. Yes, I feel insulted that I don't get pizza. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife and I, so I, could ha I could have the experience. <laughs> I had blaze. By the way, could, how, I how is your how is your thing? How is your text green? Uh, it's, it's always green. What are you talking about? It sets up that way because it's a comment. Yeah. I, I, I swear my comments aren't green on my MATLAB. You can well, change it. Whatever. Under, ah, hang on. Preferences. Uh, da, 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 editor, debugger. Uh, display. Maybe there. Limit, code, folding. No, somewhere, somewhere in here. This, this used to be such a little short menu. Now it's Maybe back. fonts. Maybe click on fonts. Or um, colors. Where's the colors? Is there colors? You go up. Oh, when oh. They see. oh. 
There we go. There oh, go. shit. I'm about to have some fun Look, tonight. Tanner can read. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, uh, have fun. Make it any color you want. Uh, my oh, comment. hell yeah. My MATLAB assignments are about to get real interesting now. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, these are the mistakes are generally in red. If red is, I, I had a graduate student about 10 years ago, probably longer than that now, who um, his wife was a school teacher, and I guess they weren't supposed to use red for corrections anymore because it was such an offensive color. So, uh, I'm red, offended by red. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me nowadays. Red air, you can change but, it to purple, I think, is what she used to use for her. For her 10 brain. years ago? That's a little early to be offended by color. All right, whatever. <laughs> Hey, you know, some some uh, some educational PhD student came up with that, so that was their paper. Anyway, Sounds about right. Sounds about right. So you notice you can get your errors in different. My errors are all in red. I left it as a default. Keywords are in blue. Strings are in purple, and you can make it anything you want. Here's an example down here. All right. So this will pop up later. I promise. Now, the first thing you always want to do in MATLAB is type clear because MATLAB remembers all of your variables from the last time you ran it, unless you're starting new like we are. But if I started right now, it would actually remember this X. So if I actually put in, if I, before I put an X, if I put in X and clear, X would still be one. And you're probably assuming it got cleared to zero and it doesn't. So usually you always start by saying clear. Um, if you want to, don't want to clear, clear, uh, clear clears out all the variables. Let me. Nice. So clear. Ugh, I'll get this out yet. Hang on. Clear clears all the variables, or if you wanted to, you can type clear variables. All right, but I know you guys, they're all lazy, so you're just going to want to click type clear. Um, what you're saying, why variables? Because you can clear up things. MATLAB also will cache um, your functions. Um, and other things. So what you can do, say is type clear all and all clears all the variables and it clears all the functions. So in the event that you had a function and you wanted, you changed it or reworded it or you did whatever, it won't register until you clear it. All right. So just start by clearing everything. All right. And you're asking what else can you clear? You can also clear your command screen your command window uh, depending on what you're doing. So occasionally I'll throw this in here. So CLC, you can also do all this from here. So you could type uh, clear all, and you use when I type in X, X is not recognized anymore because I cleared everything. All right, um, I can also clear this window because I don't want to look by typing CLC. All right, so, and then if I wanted to, I could bring X back. Yeah. All right, x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. You'll notice MATLAB has a little workspace area over here that tells you what your variables are. You can say x is equal to 2, y is equal to 4. You can also type it into a vector. And you notice MATLAB changed it to the vector 2, 4. Now, if you made this thing too long, you're saying what happens if it goes off the screen. Uh, something I haven't covered yet, but if you type, let's say, 1 colon 10. That'll give me a vector of length 10. Actually, it wrote that on the screen. God. Um, there. Try and fit that. <laughs> there. So I did a vector of length 100. You notice when the vector gets too big, it will actually just tell you the size of it. It just says it's one by 100, one row by 100 columns. And if you want to see the values, you can double click on it. At least you used to be able to. There you go. You double click on it, and then basically it puts them in there and you can scroll. I'm actually scrolling here. I should do this. And you can look at all the values. This one's 100, but if I had a matrix, it would go down this way as well. And then to get rid of this, you can just close it and you're back to your command window. All right. So the first thing I did was clear, cleared all the variables, cleared everything. So usually just clear all takes care of everything at the beginning. CLC will clear your command window if you want to do that. Uh, and then we can do some simple math. So use the double comment sign again. So if you're typing along at home, is anybody typing on along at home? No, I'm, uh, yes, I'm expecting you to upload these files to your website, Dr. Stuber. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually can, waiting for mine to load. You can expect anything you want. <laughs> this is true. Not a false statement. Yes. 
Uh, that was from an old movie when somebody said, "When when we maybe hope when may when we uh, when may we hope to be released?" And they said, "Oh, you can hope to be released anytime you want." <laughs> 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 all right so let's just do some simple math what does matlab do for math uh, i showed you it does addition obviously does subtraction multiplication so just you're typing at home alone uh, typing at home along you know, if you're alone too it works um two plus two four minus ten two times three um so i use the double comment sign here just to separate this is a section you notice the yellow stuff and you can change this yellow color too in preferences uh right kayla Hell yeah, I'm about to change all my colors. There you go. The Just most lit. important part of the most the most important thing we learned today. See, exactly. Ten minutes in, I've already learned something. All right. I should I should have David do the font section. I've never seen anybody get more creative with his fonts on his graphs than David. <laughs> all I, comic sans. Yeah, when we get when we get to there, it's yeah, it's all yeah, it's all comic yeah, sounds and comic sans. Yeah. Um yeah, you should tell him about the story about the protest. Yeah, and he's got a little routine. He's got a little routine that does it <laughs> whenever I read his code. It's, it's pretty good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you, should, you should tell them about the Comic Sans thing later. Uh, the what? The protest against it? Yeah. Yeah. It's. I only know of that because Dr. Baker's. Uh, I was talking to his daughter, and Dr. Baker loves Comic Sans. He uses it on all his websites, and his daughter's like she hates it, and she's like, you know, there's there's a there's a movement you can find on the internet that's anti Comic Sans, <laughs> they try they try to abolish it. And I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. And I actually looked up. There's a site that yeah you can. Actually, petition to get rid of it. Um, I don't know what the hell that means. Why would why would a site be able to stop you from using a font? I don't know, but that's what they want. Anyway, uh, division in MATLAB gets a little more creative. Creative just meaning complicated. Uh, you can do twenty divided by ten, or you can do twenty divided by ten. I never get the sign right here. There we go. This is also twenty divided by ten. All right, it's just because it's slanted that way, the 10 is underneath. And since it's slanted this way, the 10 is underneath. So MATLAB lets you do it either way. Um, you can raise things to the power. Um, what do you want to raise this to? A 16th power? Anybody know what that is? <laughs> what is it to the 10th power? Is that uh, a million? 8, 16, 20, uh, 2, I don't 4, know. 8, 16, 30, it's 16, a big number. Uh, it's a big number. 256. 512, it's 1,024. So we should get 1,024. And you can actually do square roots. Uh, it's QRT, if I got it right. Square root of, let's say, 16. Or if you don't like typing SQRT, you could take, uh, what is it, 16 uh, to the 0 0.5 power. How's that? And then if you wanted to run this, you can come up here and click Run. Used to be F5. Can I do F5? What do you know? F5 more runs actually. So you'll notice here. Um, I have to call this an M file. I'll figure that one out. Uh, intro to pizza, right? Is that what I usually call it? <laughs> um, there we go. So it'll ask you to name it. I name it. Um, it dumps it there, and then it runs it in your command window. And you'll see 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 minus 10 is minus 6, 2 times 3 is 6, 20 divided by 10 is 2, 20 divided by 10 is 2, 1,024, square root of 16 is 4 and 4. Look great. Looks Looking good. Cool. Yeah, all right. Um, so next section is uh, what if I don't want it to print like this? Or if I don't want it to print, what it, you know, because obviously if I put things in a loop, this is going to take forever to print. Uh, to do things in MATLAB, in MATLAB always complains, you'll notice all this yellow stuff here. And it's telling me terminate statement with semicolon to suppress output. Terminate with semicolon. So if you just take your simple math stuff and you want to suppress the output, 2 plus 2, 4 minus 10, 2 times 3, you put the, uh, actually I could have just done it up here. Add this, MATLAB will make all those little yellow mistake things or warnings disappear. And nothing prints out. And it didn't like where I put that last semicolon, so it beeped at me. There we go. What was the error? Uh, invalid expression. Uh, use parentheses. Didn't like the fact it was there, so it didn't tell me anything useful. What else can I use to uh, run this? Uh, 
Option, is that an option? Option, Command R? Let's see if that works. I don't think it's Shift, it must be, it's not Control. Uh, let's just run it, I guess it ran. It ran, there's no output because I cleared the screen. So, obviously successful, nothing happened. <laughs> All right. Uh, what about matrices? Everything generally runs in MATLAB as a matrix. So um, let's take a look at some matrix stuff. So start another section. Uh, simple matrix operations. Let's create the matrix A. Um, and what you can do with the matrix A is basically just type in. Uh, you can just type in a matrix directly like this. Uh, this would basically be the first row, one, two, three. Semicolon means move to the next line. Four, five, six is the next line. Semicolon moves, move to the next line. Seven, eight, nine. So if I ran this, I probably could shrink this a little bit and shrink this a little bit. And maybe we can look at them simultaneously. Maybe. How's that? There we go. Now when I run it, there you go. A, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's my matrix. All right, so you can enter your matrices that way. Uh, MATLAB, of course, being the matrix. Remember, this was all built out of the uh, LinPack tools, which were basically a bunch of matrix operation tools. Um, we have as a transpose operator. And the transpose, and this is yellow because basically it's complaining. By the way, I forgot a semicolon because you have to suppress the output, but I don't want to suppress the output. I want you guys to see it. So this just is a transpose. Why it's dot and then it's like an open quote sign. This does a transpose. Uh, just be aware, if you leave the dot out, it will do a complex conjugate transpose. All right, so I'll get to that in a second. So a transpose just means we swap the rows and columns. So this row becomes the first column, second row becomes the second column, third row becomes the third column. And sure enough, it does that. Okay, so um, I told you if you left the dot out, you got complex conjugate transpose. So to show that, just create a complex, uh, create a complex vector create a column vector. So I'm going to create uh, minus 1.3 plus J4. MATLAB will let you use J and or I for the square root of minus one. All right, and this is kind of new. They don't like you writing just J, they like you to write one J and one I. I don't know why. <laughs> All right. Um, so minus three, and this is going to be minus, uh, J four. I wonder if you just put the J out here, if that would complain still, probably not. Maybe it likes to have the J afterwards. No, it still doesn't like the J afterwards. It's still going to say one, right? Yeah. All right. Four times one J doesn't matter. Square root of four. And then uh, the last term in my vector is going to be two plus two, which should be four. And this will be four I or four J. It's all the same thing. Run it. And you notice one is 1.34i, 2, and 0 imaginary part. And this is just 4 with also 4 with an imaginary part. All right. Oh, and I uh, did the transpose of it because I, I wrote this as a row vector. I don't know why I did that. Let's erase that. Um, let's just put a semicolon here and a semicolon here. Now it's a column vector. There we go. And I get the same thing. All right. I know I did that, but I wanted to... Um, Uh, so I want to create the complex conjugate transpose. I guess what I can do, I know why I did that, but let's do it again here. Uh, that'll give you the complex conjugate transpose. This will just give you the transpose. So if we print those. So this turned it into a row, a row vector. So you notice this is minus 1.3 minus 4. It's still 2, and this is 4 minus 4. So this is, I take it back, this is complex conjugate because the uh, imaginary parts got flipped to negative. Zero, it doesn't care about. The last term, as I said, if you just want the transpose and not the complex conjugate transpose, you have to put in the dot. So you notice this is the same as that, just transpose. So it just turned this into a row vector. So it's minus 1.3 plus 4, 2 plus 0, 4 plus 4i. All right, and then MATLAB allows you to do a bunch of combination of things. So this is always fun. Um, assuming I've, I've kept everything correct. 
Uh, okay, so what I did here is A is this original matrix up here, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. B is the same thing, but transpose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's say I wanted to create a new matrix C that was A here and B over here. You would just type A and then B. So it just picks up this matrix and puts it over here. So now it will have three rows and six columns. All right. Now, you would just, what if you wanted to stack them underneath each other? Maybe you wanted to still have, you wanted to have uh, six rows and three columns. Well, in that case, you would put A semicolon B, which means move the B into the next line. All right. So I'll run, let me run those. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's still on the screen. We can still see it. All right. So you notice this just got moved over there and created this C matrix. This, this one got put underneath that one and created this D matrix. Uh, the next one was E is equal to A semicolon X. And I did the transpose. Uh, where's my X? Here it is. So this, which one's my X transpose? <laughs> All right, this is the complex conjugate transpose. This is the transpose. So it takes these three terms and puts it under the matrix A. So it should be one, two, four, and then it'll be minus 1.3 minus four. Uh, sorry, minus 1.3 minus four. I said that correctly, I think. And then the two goes underneath the four, five, and six. So Did I do this right? Where's my A? That's correct. So this should be, no, I just ruled A off the screen. So it should be two, five, eight, and then two, correct. And here's my A, it should be three, six, nine, followed by this term here, four minus, uh, this is the, the transpose right here, four plus uh, four J, four I, the imaginary parts four. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. So if this is E, let's go back to E, I'll try this again. What did I put on the bottom of E? I put on the complex conjugate transpose. So yeah, it is this line. So on the bottom, you should see this term, which you do, that term, which you do, and that term. And this is your original one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. In this one, I just added the transpose to it. So it'll be just, this last term will be plus versus, and this one will be plus versus the minus because I just did the complex conjugate of it. That one is the complex conjugate, that one is not. All right, so that's what you can do to combine matrices. Uh, there are a bunch of special matrices in MATLAB to remember. Um, and these are actually good for initializing things. And if you stick something in a loop and you want to do it, it takes a while for MATLAB to allocate things and this tends to speed it up. So if you want to, you could actually call, I'm actually going to suppress some of this stuff here. Uh, A, B, X, what am I going to suppress the C, D, and E? Do I use C, D, and E again? No, I don't think I use them for a while. So let me suppress those so we don't have to scroll the screen too much. All right. So this will be ones. This just creates a matrix with two rows and three columns and all it has is ones. It also has, unfortunately, MATLAB doesn't have a twos or a threes, but we'll, I'll show you how to fix that. Uh, it has zeros. This creates a matrix of zeros. It's three rows by two columns. And if you want, you can combine these. So you could have, this would be a two by two matrix of ones. This would be a two by two matrix of zeros. And this is another two by two matrix of ones. So there you go. Here's your ones matrix, zeros matrix, and here's your combined one. And let's say you don't want a matrix of ones. You want a matrix of threes. All right, watch this. Ugh. Wrong shift key. There we go. I multiply it by three. Now you've got a matrix of threes. <laughs> All right, so you're good. Um, and zeros you could do. I'm not sure what else you could do. Um, there's a couple of other ones for if you do image processing and I've, I usually used to create them with matrices, but they actually have a command that does it, but you, you might want to be able to create a matrix with that basically has ones, basically the numbers are ones for the, 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 the basically numbers, the column you're in. So if you're in column one, this would be a row, a column of ones. The next one would be column of twos, column of threes, column of fours. And they have another command that generates a rows of one, rows of twos, rows of threes, rows of fours. All right. Um, I used to kind of do it basically off of I would generate the ones and then I would multiply by the appropriate vectors. And it, it takes about three steps. It's not terrible, but sometimes it's easier just to pull out their command. Um, how do you look at matrix elements? Am I still live, by the way? Is anybody there? It's been dead for a while. Yeah, no, you're still good. You're still right. good to go. We're just fascinated. That's why we're so quiet. There you go. <laughs>
you know, that's what I hate about this, this stuff is for all I know, my internet may have dropped out 10 minutes ago and I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Sorry, I kind of spaced out there for a second. Oh. So the ones and then two comma three, what does the two comma three do again? Oh, make, it generates a matrix of ones with two rows and three columns. Okay, that's all. All right, that's what I thought. Dr. Steve Rude, I had a question. You should uh, totally uh, ask us, or you should tell us how to change the font size so it could be bigger for me to see with my, like, getting old eyes. You want to change the font size on what? MATLAB. Uh, the code. Uh, is this too small to see? Um, it's, I can still see it. It's not that bad. I was just uh, thinking about the other students just in case. Yeah, I'm squinting too. I'm with you there. Uh, I think we did. Didn't we get into that? Was that here? Yes, go to fonts and then right go here. to. Yep, yep, yep. You want to make that to like maybe 18 or 14? <laughs> no, I'm going to make it 15. That's a good compromise. How's that? Better. better. That's better. Better. Much better. Much All better, right. yes. All right. Thanks. How's that? All right. Um. Uh, Oh, yeah, so let's suppose we want to access uh, matrix elements. Uh, oof. Let's try that. Did I have the right one? Yeah, I'll get it out yet. Hang on. There we go. Uh, this doesn't really scroll anymore. I'd bring it up. All right, so if you want to see the matrix A, which I have here, you would just type A. If you want the first row, first column element, which would be 1, 1, I just say A of 1, 1, right? And if I ran that, that means here's A, and this is the first row, first column element, 1, 1. Uh, and you could do um, 2, 3. 2, 3 wouldn't be much different. You just type A, paren, 2, comma, 3, and that would break out what second row, uh, third column would be 6. Uh, something more interesting is what if you wanted everything out of the first row? So it would be one colon and one comma colon and the colon operator says take all of the elements. So as I said, this was two, three, two, three is six. The first uh, row is one, two, three. All right. And you might say, well, what if I didn't want the whole row? What if I, well, let's say I wanted a column instead. Let me do the column instead. So you do the same thing for columns and then I'll pick a pieces out of it. Um, if you said a colon two, that would take the entire, I'll take basically the entire row of the second column. Is that right? <laughs> column two. Yeah, let's uh, run it. Yeah, so I should get 258, all the rows in the second column, right? And this one was all the columns in the first row. All the columns in the first row, all the rows in the second column. And then you might say, what if I don't want the whole stupid row and the whole stupid column? I just want a part of it. You can do that too. Um, and I made it hard. So let's say we wanted to get uh, all of the first column and all of the third column, and we wanted to skip the second column, which if you're in signal processing, which is decimation, so you want every other one. All right, well, you would just type the colon, which says all the rows. And this says do column one and column three. So I should get one, four, seven, and three, six, nine. And sure enough, MATLAB knows what it's doing. Imagine that. Um, uh, we haven't gotten to the other stuff. We'll get, we'll get to the other stuff here in a minute. Okay, so what about matrix operations? So now that you know how to generate a matrix, in fact, we, there'd be more than ways than this, but these are common. You know how to generate a matrix. You know how to access elements out of it or chunks of it. Uh, what else can we do with matrices? Because remember, this was all born out of these the subroutine library that you used to be able to get on magnetic tape. For those who don't know magnetic tape, think of a big flash drive. Think of it as a record, like a vinyl record. That was same year, same era of technology. <laughs> it's, all right, uh, matrix operations. So let's take a matrix C. Uh, and I have the output suppressed in D. And let's suppose we want to do something with these. These are two ve basically vectors. Um, I could have made them matrices, but I just made them vectors. These are row vectors. Let's 
give myself a little space off the bottom of the screen. Suppose I want to add them. All right, just plus C plus D. MATLAB just falls to everything is matrix operation. So C plus D, and let's run this. All right, so this would be five. If you add these up, five and five, and sure enough, you get five, five, and five. All right, um, you can um, track them. All right, so this would be three, one, minus one. Three one one uh, three one my uh, three uh, whatever it's correct three one minus one. Uh, you can actually uh, do, 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 do. Uh, do matrix multiplication on them. It would multiplication will default to matrix multiplication. Um, just to show you problems that we get because uh, students used to always come in and complain to me. Mail labs not working. <laughs> really, this commercial product is used by. Thousands of people across the world is not running. <laughs> yes. No, I have a feeling that you got the test syntax wrong. This is a typical error, so I'll run it. All right. So if you try to multiply this vector by this vector, you can't do it mathematically because the inner dimensions don't agree, meaning this is uh, one row by three columns, and this is one row by three columns. So this is three and one, and the, basically you have to have three and three in the middle. So when you type out, I wish I could do this on a board, but I can't do it on a board. Um, how do I do this? Uh, in other words, it's usually said it's R by C, and the next one is R by C. Of course, it turns it purple. The number of rows is one, so this is technically the first one is a one by three vector, and this is a three a one by three vector as well. Ugh. And so as a result, the inner dimensions don't agree, meaning this three and one don't agree, so you can't do matrix multiplication. You could if this was a three by one. So how do you do a three by one? Well, you take this matrix and you transpose it, and then it becomes a column vector. When it becomes a column vector, then you can multiply them together. Let me erase this because it doesn't like that. Anyway, so when you get this incorrect dimensions, as students used to complain, Mat 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 MATLAB's not working. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> What's it saying? Your matrix dimensions don't agree. <laughs> well, did you check them? No. Yeah, so check your matrix dimensions. That's all that means. It's, it's for some reason doesn't like it there. I'll, one other thing I'll show you next, but when you run this, you'll notice what did you get? You got 16 because you'll get what? Four plus six plus six. Uh, that's 16. See, MATLAB's right. All right. Um, what if you wanted to do element by element multiplication? So you want to do one times four and two times three and two times three so that you would end up with... Uh, Uh, four six six yeah uh, i'm kind of jumping ahead here but that's okay um then in that case let me do this first you would type this as c dot times d and the dot means we're not doing it means basically matlab defaults to matrix multiplication so this basically says stop defaulting to matrix multiplication and do normal multiplication there is you go four six six so that's what you would get there. Now, the other way to fix this would have been to, remember I told you this one was what, uh, this is a one by three multiplied by a three by one. Yeah. So down here, if you went ahead and transposed the C matrix first, you'll notice you'll get a three by one. And if you keep D as a row vector, it's a one by three. So you'll notice these dimensions also agree inside here, the ones. So you can do matrix multiplication on that. But when you do that, of course, you end up with this matrix because you've turned that one the other way anyway. You end up with this, this matrix for three by three matrix. Something beeped. Oh, that's my uh, text. It's my... Uh, <sighs> it's my daughter texting me. I think it's a picture of an Oktoberfest from BJ's, uh, which is in season. <laughs> uh, I'll have to make nice. my way down there. All right. Nice. So that's basically when you do multiplication. So be careful what you do for multiplication. Um, there's other things you can do. Let me do these before I forget. Um, and this is common in controls. Stop with the air. So I'll just let's call it, let's, gener let's generate a new matrix. I called it small a and uppercase and lowercase do matter. 
Uh, this is 2002. So it looks like the identity matrix multiplied by 2. All right. And then, of course, since it's 2 by 2, you can multiply it together or you can multiply it three times. However, in controls, if you're controls people, they like to take matrices to the power. They like to take it to the third power, the nth power in general. But, you know, fifth power, eighth power, what does that mean? This is basically the matrix cubed. So MATLAB is actually good at that. So you notice here's A. If you multiply A by A, you get the fours. If you do it three times, you multiply this by two, this by that, you'll get the eights. Or you could just use MATLAB's equation, take it to the cube power. So it does matrix operations. That's why controls, people's, controls people tend to like this program because it's loaded with control systems math. All right. Um, how do we make our output look good? And David's got actually very good at making his output look good. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, I have clear here. Obviously, I have clear here to start over again. I probably should clear the screen, too. Um, suppose I wanted to make this look good. So, so far, my answers basically always say answer. So if you don't put a semicolon on the end, it's answer, and it just blots it out like this, which is fine. I like it. I can read it. Uh, but MATLAB doesn't really like that. It uh, prefers, see, it always complains. You get all these little marks on the side. All these marks are warnings, and it's saying, uh, usually decreases code performance is often unnecessary. Yeah, except when you've messed it up a few times that you know better. So it didn't like my clear all. Um, line 14, it produces something that won't be used. That's helpful. See, it complained when I had put the semicolon there. I just wanted to show the uh, math. Anyway, it puts all the errors here. One of them obviously is going to be terminate with a semicolon. All right. So if you terminate with semicolons, it gets rid of all those yellow errors, but it will put errors over on the side here. So just be aware of it. Um, sometimes they're useful. Sometimes they're not. All right. Um, anyway, so if you don't want to do it this way, so if you wanted to put semicolons on here to suppress it and wanted to have it so it looked good, what you can use is use the display command. And the display command generally works inside of a vector. So you would write A would be equal to 20 divided by 10. And I can put this on the next line. And then if you want to display that, you could write DISP for display, paren, because that's a function. This makes it a vector, and you're putting a, a string in the vector. So this is a string. And then uh, where's Kayla? I made my strings purple. What color are your strings? I, they're boring right now. They're about to be multicolored, though. Uh, we're going with rainbow strings. All yes, right. exactly. Awesome. All right, so mine are just boring purple. <laughs> All right, and it says 20 divided by 10, comma, and then I would say num to string. So this changes this number A into a string, sticks it into the vector. So basically, this is a vector with the term here, here, and then displays it. And... This one does pretty much the same thing, uh, except I put the division sign the other direction. So let's run it. And there you go. 20 divided by 10 is 2, and then 20 divided by the 10 is 2. So and it displays it nicely, and it displays it one line a piece, and you don't have the big answer thing. So you can put it that way, and you can add strings. So, you know, you could say answer to, what do we say, question, question three, part C. All right. And then when you print that, then when it's being graded, nobody messes it up and they know exactly what question you're answering. Now, the big problem I get is most people start copying and pasting. So before you know it, all of their answers look like question three, part C. <laughs> um, so your question is, is now next, now that these plot these all in lines, what if I need to add a space? I don't know any clever way to add space in MATLAB. So I just do it brute force. And what is brute force? Uh, just print a blank line. There you go. Display with nothing in it. All right. You can display matrices as well here. This is identity matrix. This is, I think, a bad idea of a joke. So your identity matrix is usually a capital I. So this is I. Uh, they could have used the pirate I. I. Uh -huh. And then you hit display, num to string. Anyway, this one's in two parts because it's a matrix. And the reason, because this is a matrix and this is just a single variable, you can't append them together. So it would be identity matrix equal one zero. So if I tried to put this over here, it's going to complain. Oops. I meant to hit go. There we go. Uh, 
too many arguments. It wasn't too many arguments earlier. See, I did the same thing here. The only difference is I put in a matrix. Uh, I think that's all I did, isn't it? No, I would have to do this. Hang on. It doesn't run. It, there we go. It doesn't like the dimensions. This is a one by one and this is a two by two. All right. So it's, uh, is that right? Yeah. A is two by two. So um, it doesn't like that at all. So you can't do that. You have to put it on a separate line. Um, I'm not sure how you would slide it over. Anyway, my recommendation is just put it on a second line. So if you've got a, a, a matrix, it doesn't really fit in the line. It still treats the strings. If you're wondering, because it treats strings like elements of a matrix. So it expects, expects the matrix dimensions to agree. All right, MATLAB also has a lot of fun numbering formats that, so you can do some fun stuff. Let's do take a look at the first one. You know, I'm gonna do, I know MATLAB doesn't like clear, but let's also do CLC. All right, that'll clear my screen so we don't have to look at the old stuff. All right, so there was my question three part C. Anyway, my identity matrix. And then what I did, as I said, let's do format long. And I was display format long and then I did pi. I'm not sure it does anything with num to string. Uh, I should try that, shouldn't I? Yeah, this would be it. Let me copy that, put it here. And this would be, I wonder if I can do this. Uh, MATLAB does understand LaTeX. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> if you're doing figure captions, I'm not sure it works with display, but let me give it a try. Uh, no, it did not like LaTeX in that case. I'm not sure why. I wonder if I can use my... Uh, It seemed to like it when I directly put in the font, but you notice the format did not, the long formatting did not stick with the, the num to string thing. It still shortened it out. All right, but if you wanted to print something and see what is long now, you're asking, does that change what happens internally with MATLAB? The answer is no. Uh, MATLAB doesn't care if what the format is. This is just the screen format. So if you want to look at full precision, you would put format long. Uh, it usually defaults to format short, obviously. So if you type format short, it will go back to the short format of, I don't know how many decimal places, but it's like five digits versus the double precision that we normally get. Um, Dr. Stubert, so when you put format long, does it keep everything in format long for the rest of the code? Until you type format something else. Okay. In fact, it might remember it from the time you turn it off to the time you start it up again. Oh, unless you clear it. Maybe. Oh, okay. I did used to. MATLAB changes about, you know, they, they come out with a new version every six months and they change the syntax. And I have a lot of old cold code I'll occasionally pick up and run and it won't work. Ah, like LT Spice. <laughs> Always. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. Yeah, they, 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 it's called an upgrade. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's usually if it says format short, it'll stay format short for the rest of the, the rest of the session. So, I don't know. We can try it. You want to do clear... Now let's do format short. I ran it short. So if I, this is another fun thing with MATLAB. You can comment a bunch of text. There, it's all commented. Uh, and then we could type clear. And then I could type pi again. And no, the clear did not clear out the formatting. I wonder if clear Professor, all Professor, a quick question. Sure. Uh, for the display and the, the blink, uh, was there a purpose behind it? Yeah, blank line. If you want to oh, I see. face the line. So it's, uh, where is it? It's here. So here's my identity matrix. And then I wanted a, a blank line. Oh, I see. Thank okay. you. So if you, uh, it probably makes more sense to put it here. There. So now put a blank line between it. It's just if you've got a lot of things to print, sometimes it's 20 lines in a row and you kind of like, well, this is question one and this is question two and I wanted a blank line. That's the only way I know how to do a blank line. If somebody's got another another way to do it, let me know. All right, so you can comment that stuff. This is also really, you can uncomment. There you go. So that just turns it back into a short format. 
Uh, you can also do, there's other formatting. There is long exponential formatting. All right, so L looks the same. You know, she's got the exponent sitting here. Uh, there is short, you can copy and paste that. Short E. Oops. Okay, so short E just takes it back down to the little five digits, but still does exponential. Uh, and the next one is kind of fun. You can put it in rat format. <laughs> which is I'm not sure why they call it rat. It should, it should be rational, but it, this is rational. So it'll attempt to turn it into a fraction, which a lot of times when you're working like digital signal processing, oftentimes we have fractions for frequencies. Uh, so a lot of times you get these long decimals and it's just easier to say, oh, it's 355, one thirteenth. So it turns it into rational, it tries to turn it into a fraction, which of course pi is not a fraction, but it gets you the closest one it can find. Uh, and I have never used the following one, but it actually has a hexadecimal format, which I don't think worked for me last time. <laughs> it used to work for me. Um, hex, that would be 16. What would 15 be? 402. Um, are we still in the, uh, let me change the. Uh, we're still doing short. No, it should be short exponential. I'm just going to put short. I'm going to move that there. I don't know why I still have an E there. Still have an E there. I'm not sure. E is probably the number, but I'm not sure why the uh, 15 got changed to that. If I put in zero, uh, I did this once before and I got it to work. So zero is zero. Well, actually, what I can do is type in zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I should get zero. And this is obviously going to be one. I can't tell you why off the top of my head. What is three? Three is going to be zero, one. I don't know why these are the way they are. Anyway, one time I had the hex format working. I don't know why. I don't remember exactly what I did at the time. But it does do hex format if you can figure it out. So let's cancel that one off since I can't figure it out anymore. All right, other fun. How do you generate big long signals and other things in MATLAB without having to type them in or do other things? You use the colon operator. And the colon operator is really handy. So if you want to count this, you want MATLAB to count something out from you, like from zero to five, zero, one, two, three, four, five, you would type n is equal to zero colon five. This is like a do loop, except, um, Oh God, back when I was doing Fortran, this was years ago, there was Waterloo Fortran. And of course, it's now dead. But Waterloo Fortran was a version of Fortran. It was really nice. It had these implied do loops. So at the end of a line, if you wanted to repeat the line six times, you could put something like this at the end of it. And it would it would do the line. And that's kind of, I probably stole, they probably stole it from that, but it's a good idea. But n was equal to zero colon five, just count zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is the starting point. That's the ending point. Now you can also increment, if you don't want to increment by ones, you can count by two, zero, two, four, and then it'll stop. Uh, so let's run that. So here's zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, am I still in uh, rash? No, I'm in rational format. <laughs> Let me change it back to short. <laughs> uh, I'll could have left it in rational. I didn't, at least don't have it in hex. All right, uh, that, and then let me clear the screen again. CLC, clear command line. All right, so there are one, two, three, four, five. This is zero, two, four. Um, you can type things in long like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This gets a little tedious. Uh, you could have generated this by saying, what is it, one, colon seven, and then the next row would be eight, colon 14. Is the easier way to generate that. So you notice these are the same. Uh, you can also grab these. So this is good for when you signal processing, when you do like decimation or interpolation. Suppose you wanna grab all the rows and you wanna grab columns one through seven, but every other one. So you wanna get one, three, five, and seven. So I wanna grab this one, this one, this one, and that one, which I did here. All right, so that would be that. Um, 
this one says do every third one. So I'd grab one, four, and that would, uh, one, four, yeah, and the, and the last one, which is what, seven. Yeah, one, four, and seven, so that would be it. You could have done it with the rows the other way. Anyway, you could pick any jump you want on this particular thing. Generating signals. So if you're into signal processing, you're in controls, you want to generate signals. Although controls, the controls two box is a little bit, uh, a little bit stricter on their signal generation. But normally, if you want to generate a signal, you would just basically put the signal in a vector. All right, you can either do a row vector or a column vector. And then so you'd say that's my discrete signal. If I wanted to add two signals, I could say z is equal to x plus y. And then I could display the output like that. All right, so in this particular case, I have, uh, what would I add? I would get uh, 1, 0, 3. Is that right? 1, 0, 3. Good, I'm doing so, so far so good. 2 and 5. All right, so just adding them, you just add them together. They have to be the same length or it's going to complain about the matrix dimensions. Um, this is just gives you a nice looking output. Uh, you can, can subtract the two, just um, X minus Y. All right, and I called it Z again, but that's all right. So X minus Y would be um, minus one uh, plus two, one, what would this one be? Uh, four and uh, three. Good. Check in MATLAB. MATLAB still works. <laughs> you can also do uh, multiply the signals, but remember you're doing signal multiplication. So when you do signal operations, it's an element by element operation. Let me hit some return keys to get myself off the bottom of the screen. All right, uh, you do basically star x dot star y, um, which is what I have here. x dot star means element by element. So you, this would be 0, minus 1, 2, minus 3, and 4. There you go. Those numbers there. So that's how you multiply two signals together. Uh, you can square a signal. Uh, do not use the matrix square. You've got to use kind of the signal processing. That means dot square. That means do it element by element. It means square every element in the vector x. So this would be 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. There you go. Uh, if you wanted to create, this is common in signal processing too. Uh, you want to create one half to the n from 0 to 5. I'm just going to print that one out. I could have done display, but I didn't. Let's see, I could do DISP display X. <laughs> and it did pretty much the same thing. All right, it just didn't write X equals. All right, so display X would look like this. Um, this one you could probably, since this is just a row, you could probably write uh, in purple. That's my default. Uh, and then I would have to say comma num to string x and close the vector. Oop, I forgot to open the vector. All right, and that would, there we go. Uh, one, as I said, uh, what did I do? I was taking one half to the end. So this would be one, a half, a fourth, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second. So it might make more sense to do this. All right, so if you want to see it, there you go. One, a half, a fourth, an eighth, a sixteenth, thirty seconds. So the rational thing actually is kind of nice for assignments and stuff. All right, um, what else can we do? You can make the signal go backwards. So you would just say, this is always people wonder, how do you make it go backwards? Uh, you just increment it by a negative number. So you can increment by negative 10, negative 5. You can increment it by minus a half. Uh, but I just did minus one. So this is going to go zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, down to minus five. And then it makes the signal one half to the minus whatever that power is. And then I can display it. Uh, in this case would be y equals, and I should say y here. And I'd want to change the format back to rational, so I can just delete it there. 
All right. And so this going backwards, y would be equal to obviously zero is one. And then this is two, two to the one power, which is two, four, eight, 16, 32. So that would be my signal. Uh, and it printed it out this way. Why did we print it out this way? Oh, just because it, this is the way the vector happened to print out. But one, two, normally you'd want to flip it. Did I mention the flips already? Uh, we'll get to that. I think I do the flips. If you're wondering how to flip this, you would say flip left, right. And that would make it look like it's going backwards because it doesn't know you're thinking this is a signal going forward or backwards. And I flipped the wrong thing. <laughs> uh, let's try flipping the Y. And I probably have another parenthesis to cut out of there. And a little warning sign. All right. There it is. So there's my one. This is how you would look at it going backwards, zero to minus five. All right. But as far as MATLAB was concerned, all you did was that generate a vector. If you looked at K, oops, I'm going to type K here. If you looked at K, K is zero, one, two, three, minus five. So it just puts the numbers in the order you calculated them this way. So I guess you could have flipped the K and then calculated it. That would have worked as well. Um, I know I just typed a K here somewhere. Where am I typing? No, I'm over on that screen. Uh, so if I pull out the flip left right here, cut, I could have pasted it here, put in the K, get rid of that one. This should run. Um, Didn't like it. Which line am I bad on? Line 157. Oh, that was, that, I knew I typed an extra K in the wrong spot. That was it. There we go. There we go. So this actually flipped it because you'd put it in kind of numerical order like you would visual, visualize it. And then, and then you would get the... Uh, uh, why should therefore be... I should get the minus 32 first, right? Uh, da, 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 Oh, I didn't flip it, so I should say K is equal to that. K equals K flipped. There we go. Now I get the 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. So it looks backwards, and that was what the K looks like. Okay, so that's how you use the colon operator. Uh, how do you plot things? Because that's the next thing. We're kind of looking at some pretty output here. And uh, I'll go through some of it. David can interject with his uh, routine, maybe, if you've got it sitting around. All right, so let's... Uh, Clear the screen, which is easier than making a new file. <laughs> All right, so suppose you wanted to plot an analog signal. So every time you guys plot an analog signal, believe it or not, you were actually sampling the signal. So let's say we're going to sample this at every 0.05 seconds. So I'm going to generate a bunch of values to basically evaluate my signal at. So normally you would say T would go from zero, and let's say I want to do one period of a cosine or sine wave. So I'm going to go zero to two pi, and I want to take the samples every 0.5 spacing apart. All right, so then I would just say, so this creates a vector with all the times I need it. And I stick it into cosine and I generate X and I generate Y. So now I want to plot these things. Oh boy. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically call up a figure number and you don't have to, MATLAB will default. The problem is that it will erase your old figures before you create another one. So let's say you want to call up figure window one and you say, does it have to be one? No, you could actually start at figure two or three or four or 10. It will just put a label on it and call it figure two. And then what you do is you're going to plot the horizontal axis and the vertical axis. So we put the T there for time, X is the amplitude, T for time and Y is the amplitude. And this would generate a nice little plot. Let me run it. There we go. Lovely. Oh, yeah, looking great. I can barely see it. <laughs> um, Instead of calling it figure two, can you, like, label it something like figure, you know, 1A or whatever? I don't think so, but um, how about 2.5? I don't think it's going to like that. No. <laughs> No, okay. Has to be has to be an integer. Go has on. to be a scalar integer from one to this number. I don't know how many figures you want, but we could actually try that number. You want to try that number? Let's try it. Uh, there we go. All right. 
And so it keeps that figure. You'll notice that I also have figure two sitting back there. It hasn't changed. All right. So this is this figure. It's uh, the lines are thin. The numbers are hard to read. So, and David's gotten very good at this. So I was pointing out that also there's no labels. And I always used to hate this when I was in industry. People from the lab would always send stuff up without labels. <laughs> well, it's obvious what it is. Really, then what is it? Uh, uh, anyway, it's really easy with MATLAB. You can just say X label and put in T. And I overdid it, but meaning you could just do... that and that will label it however you won't be able to see it because matlab makes everything really small uh x label where's my here it is can you see the t too small all right so if you don't like it and it's too small you can't actually fix it which i've done here one oop there we go one i made it italic so the it basically that's latex and it says make the next character italic it's not great latex but it's latex you can change the font size. I changed it to 16. And you can change the font. The font name I changed to time. Um, I don't have Comic Sans. <laughs> um, so let's. this is times. What else could I change? This is Helvetica, actually. So if I run this again, you notice it's bigger and it looks like a times font. Can you see it? Too small, too big? No, it's there. We're good to go. All right. Looking good. It isn't. It isn't Comic Sans, though. No, I don't have. It's a protest. It. Formal protest. Yeah, well, I'll I'll try and find it for the Mac and. <laughs> All right. You can do the same thing with Y label. The slash it is italic. I think if you put it in a space, it'll skip it and turn the X regular. The slash rm means to remove it. I think there's problems with space. This isn't a great LaTeX editor, but the commands work. Rm means remove italic and use the parentheses. It means italic t. Slash means remove it because I don't want the parentheses italic. All right, so this just says X of T, and this will say and Y of T when a 16-point font, and you can switch this to times or anything I wanted. Uh, I'd have to check and see what I have for fonts. All right, and you'll notice I have a label here. Actually, I could put it in the space. They may have improved their, uh, they may have improved their uh, LaTeX capabilities. Anyway, it's not a great, it hasn't been a great LaTeX editor, so... Just be aware. And I kind of wonder if it puts an extra space. See, I'll put in the extra space now. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it does throw in the extra space every now and then. You have to be careful. X of T, it's throwing it in here. Uh, yeah, so it looks like a mess sometimes because it does not, it does not, it, it's not a great LaTeX editor. LaTeX is supposed, you, LaTeX just lets you type and then it handles the formatting for you. This, you have to handle a little bit of the formatting yourself. So if you want to make the X and T look uh, italic like they do in textbooks, then you would write it like that. All right. And you can change the font size and font name per line. Uh, David, what do you do? You have like a subroutine that you throw all this in, in defaults? Yeah, I put that all into a, well, not in the X label and the Y level label functions. I actually have a function, which uh, you probably might go over. It's the, uh, what's his name? Wait, I'm trying to look for my old homework. Uh, it's uh, the AX equals GCA, which is basically, I think, uh, it sets the current figure to be edited. Yeah. And uh, right. I use the function AX dot font size equals okay. something. So that just uh, changes the font everything. of everything. Yep, okay. it has, handles everything. OK, OK. Um, yeah, do I do, do I do that coming up here? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember what I threw into this. Uh, through into this assignment. This is the title. You can add a title. Notice I made it 18 point font. You can add a legend to say what the line colors are. So if I run that again, you notice here's, wow, the legend's really small. <laughs> Does font size work with that too? Ooh, so um, glad you added that legend. Yeah. It's so clear now. Yeah, there we go. Let's try this. <laughs> How's that? Oh, wow, it works. <laughs> yeah, it's an ugly font. It's in Helvetica, but. Yeah, mine defaults, defaults to Helvetica. I'm not sure how you change the default. To uh, you would, It'd be nice if you could just change these defaults all the time. It doesn't matter because every time you upgrade, you'd have to redo it. Okay, so there. Uh, here's the title. The X looks funny, but it's okay. And this is X, Y label, X label, and you can put in... You can put in... Um, um, a, a legend. 
You can also play with the axes a little bit. So these are just the basic commands to get started. You get more advanced, like David was talking about with the, the axes. Uh, this one, you'll notice that technically I'm going 0 to 2 pi, but it likes to print things from 0 to 7, and this just looks awkward, especially for a bunch of obsessive compulsive personality disordered engineers. All right, so you can actually change that, and I didn't, does axis 0 to 2 pi? Yeah. So this just says the minimum x is 0, the maximum x is 2 pi, minimum x is minus 1, maximum x is plus 1. So basically it says to stop it at 2 pi. All right, now you could have also... Uh, I don't think I'd go through it here, but I might be able to dig it up somewhere else. Uh, sometimes, like in signal processing, you don't want this to go this. You want this to be done in terms of pies. So what you can do is take and let's erase this line. And up here, when you say plot T, you would say plot T divided by pi and plot T divided by pi. And now it kind of scales everything. So, yeah, so this would be 1 pi, this would be 2 pi, and this is like 0 0.2 pi, 0 0.4 pi, 0 0.6 pi, 0 0.8 pi. All right, so if you wanted to do it that way, and then you could come down here into your legend. Oh, and I know that there's a time sign in, uh, in uh, LaTeX, and I think it's uh, times. I think times pi will get me what I want. There we go, times pi. So you have to multiply t by pi. I guess it's, uh, I guess I'm not doing t times pi, am I? I'm doing um, t divided by pi. No, it's times pi, this would be correct. So you'd multiply that by pi, so it'd be two pi. All right, so this is the time and you have to multiply by pi. All right, so you can do stuff like that. Uh, anyway, so just dividing that is one way of doing it. Some other people scale it up here, but you can just scale it when you plot it. Uh, loops. What does MATLAB have for loops? You can do loops in MATLAB, although you're kind of noticing that the matrix stuff often is faster and easier. Uh, here's a loop in MATLAB. Just start out with uh, pre kind of pre assign this X to have seven elements in it. And then you're going to say N goes from one to seven, one, two, four, six, and then it'll stop. And just say that exit zero is zero, exit, uh, I'm sorry, exit one will be two, exit two will be four. Exit four will be eight, and that's what should be good. Let's see if I run it. What do I get? I can put my figure away. Uh, two. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, that's right. Because okay, you're I'm skipping every right. two. Yeah. Two. Yeah, because I'll go by two. So it's, it's going to be two, and then six, and then uh, 10, and then 14. Yeah. Okay, so that just ran it in a loop, and it kept the zeros in there. Um, I could have eliminated this and done it by one. And it keeps printing my figures because that's what it'll do. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So it just runs it in a loop. It's four, and then you use the colon operators. You put end, and it's nicely formats it for you. Uh, MATLAB also has while loops, if you prefer while loops. Okay, so just start, I did the same thing. I just initialized this to zero because you don't have to declare signal. I just got in the habit because after you've made enough mistakes in MATLAB, like uh, not remembering to clear your variables and all of a sudden you're wondering why you're running your code over and over getting the same answers. <laughs> Sometimes it helps just zero everything out and MATLAB will complain about clearing all, but yeah, it may be slower, but when you're developing your stuff, it works fine. You know, once, once you've got it concrete and ready and you're just going to use it, then you can remove the clear all and it will run faster because it remembers all that stuff. But while you're developing, I just recommend clear all. This is the same thing. It clears everything out to zero. You would say n equal one and you'd say wall n is less than or equal to six run. So n starts out as one and y at one would be two and this increments it so it goes to uh, two and this would be four and then it goes to what three and it's six. And you'll notice you get pretty much the same thing. I didn't quite go to seven like the last one, but uh, as long as the loop is n equals six, when it gets greater than six, meaning when it gets to seven, it exits the loop, and then you just, I printed the output, y. Uh, this is also a really good command, so if you're in my class, <laughs> if you're in my class and you've got an assignment, you'll notice that I have you run the same code, except you run it for a bunch of different signals, and you, some people just basically take the code and copy it seven times, and then what happens if they have a mistake is they copy the mistake seven times. 
And that means you have to correct the mistake seven times, which they usually don't. They just turn in seven wrong answers. So what you can do instead is write your code. Usually you'll do it after this. And then what you'll do is just say, okay, Dr. Stuber gave me five cases to do A, B, C, D, E, which I don't know if MATLAB, I think MATLAB may let you use strings. I'll try that in a second. Uh, what you can use is the case statement. So this says for n equal one to five, so I'm just gonna count through the cases. So if I give you five cases, and you would say basically switch n, and then underneath there would be case one, and you could define a function. You could define whatever it is you needed to define. So if you needed to just declare, you could have written a matrix in here, or, or a vector, or whatever. Uh, in this particular case, I wanted to show off the fact that MATLAB knows how to do functions. So for case one, so if you had to run five cases on your software, you would write your software, probably down here, and you would run through this and basically, well, before the end sign, you'd write your software somewhere in here. Here, my, this is all I have for mine. I'm just gonna integrate these functions. So basically you would say case one, and then after I did case one, it would come up here and we count to two, and they would do case two, and then three, and then four. I think it might do, uh, it might do uh, strings as well. I'll have to test it, but you'll notice in this case, I'm integrating uh, sine of t, from zero to two pi, and what's the area under a single sine wave? Zero. Here's the integral of cosine of t, the area is also zero. Then I took the area of e to the minus t, and I got about one, it should be about uh, one, right? e to the minus t, it starts at one, it, no, it's not, it doesn't, it'll be a little less because it doesn't decay down to zero. This is sine squared, sine squared, the area is about pi. And this is t squared, which gives you t cubed over 3 from 0 to 2 pi, which would be, uh, I'm not sure what it would be. Let's assume it's 82.6. So this is just integrates. This is how you can declare a function in MATLAB. Uh, you can change it, obviously, as I did going through the case statements and write it. And then SF here just prints. I just saved all of the integral signs in a, a vector. And so about. what does that at sign do again? I don't know if I missed that part. This so is how you declare a function in MATLAB. Okay. Okay, you declare at, and these are your variables. Okay, that's weird. And you can add, but yeah, it used to be different, because if you read some of my old assignments, I tell you how to do it differently, and they've changed yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think this, yeah, this is the newer way to do it. Um, trying to think else. Oh, um, let me see. Case switch in. Uh, I think you can use strings let's go with a i don't remember if i can do this but let's see if it works here you go um it didn't <sighs> yeah it, it only found one case a so every time through it did this case here and basically found out the integral was zero 10 to the minus 16th is zero all right, um, so you can use strings on here as well. So if you wanted to, if you had some sort of way of counting strings, part A, part B, whatever, you can use strings. Uh, in this case, I just use numbers because I'm an engineer and we like numbers. So I did cases one, two, three, four, five, but you can use strings. So um, linear equations. MATLAB solves linear equations. That was kind of one of the things that uh, the uh, original Fortran routines had. They had all these matrix manipulations that you're seeing, plus they had a, an equation solver. So let's just set up A to be the identity matrix. B is 3, 4. And if you wanted to calculate, uh, where do I type this? Um, linear equations. So this would be AX equals B. All right, so if you wanted to solve for B, you could bring A inverse on both sides. So this would be A inverse B. So inverse A times B would be solving the set of linear equations, uh, which is three for it's the identity matrix. So it's a boring problem. However, MATLAB, this is not a best way to do it. The inversion, actually they've mucked with this over the years. So sometimes it's a good way and sometimes it isn't. Uh, they've mucked with it over the years. The way it used to be, the good way to solve it was to say A divided by B and this basically says take a matrix and kind of do division, except it knows it's matrices, so it's basically solving the simultaneous equations. Um, and if you don't like that because it's confusing or too small or you, it's just bugs you, which I find is always a little awkward, I always have to kind of look it up <laughs> because it's not intuitive to me, uh, you can write linsolve. 
which is this is calls lin solve. All right. And that just means solve the equations. All right. And so you get the same answer. It's just, and this is A and B, and it does this operation. Uh, other fun in MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB now has some really good online help. If you're just typing, if you're one of those people who likes to type, you can just type help, like over here. Uh, I forgot the P. If you type help conjugate, it says it basically calculates the complex conjugate of X. All right, so you get the help commands. You can also type help, like if you want to help in a signal processing toolbox, help signal. And basically here, it basically tells you what you can do in the signal. You can click on one of these now. In the old days, it just strung out a list and then you'd say help a mat. Uh, I guess I can get rid of my daughter's pictures of the beer. <laughs> All right. Um, signal processing toolbox documentation. You can oh. tell her that, yes, we are jealous. Yes, we are. Yes, she's. It's, uh, <laughs> she called me the other night and wanted to know. The BJs have a good Oktoberfest. I said, yeah, they usually have a really good one. I tried to get in Saturday night, but there was too much of a line with people packed in there with their masks on. I decided that's a bad idea. All right, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all, yeah. <laughs> all right, so you can type it in the help command. It'll pull it up uh, here, and you can click on every one that you want to do. There's a dot product if you want to see dot product instead of conjugate, but if you want to see conjugate. It's actually nice. It's got the description. It's got examples, uh, input arguments. So the online help documentation now is actually very good, which is if you're using Octave, a lot of this stuff works in Octave and Octave's free. Uh, Octave, I do not, at least the version I use does not have this kind of nice help feature. This is just, this might be worth your extra hundred dollars <laughs> just to get the help feature. Uh, but yeah, you can go through all of this documentation, getting started. Um, desktop basics, which is what I kind of took you guys through. Uh, probably more gory detail than you wanted. Um, anyway, so the help is always up here. It gets you some examples and other things. You can always type help from here if you're looking real quickly. You don't want to click. The help is good. You can type it here. Also, this is actually used to be a handy command, which is now kind of replaced with this. You can type conjugate up here. Uh, if you spell it right. All right, and now it looks for the keyword conjugate. If you're doing it in the command line window here, you would just say look for, you can throw it in your code too, but you could say look for conjugate. And it finds all of the commands, this can be handy. This finds all the commands that have the word conjugate in them or in the description. All right, so um, anyway, just you can remember those two that get you through most of it. MATLAB does like functions. See if I can make this work. <laughs> All right, so you can generate a function. So you can create your own functions. Like uh, if you type help, what was one of the functions we used? Um, well, how about linsolve? All right, you type help linsolve. That's the one I just used here. You'll notice it's got some nice documentation here. It lists some stuff, gives examples, and this is kind of cute. Turns out you can make your own functions. All you have to do, you can actually put these in a file, or if you're gonna have, I've got a number of them in a in a, a file that I keep in a directory that I use regularly. Um, this one, if you're just using functions that are specific to this particular script, you can just put it at the bottom of the script. All right. So in this case, you would say function. These are the variables that get returned. Uh, I called this rectipolar. This is a real simple routine terms: rectangular coordinates and polar coordinates. These would be the inputs you pass into MATLAB. So this would accept x and y puts back magnitude and phase. When you type help function, or help, when I type help rectipolar, it will actually display this. So this is your help file. So this is in some sort of file, but it's all commented, commented like this right after the word function. All right, then you just type in your code. So my magnitude is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, and phase is arctangent two of y divided by x imaginary over real. And then I end the function, and I can run it that way. If I need to call it, All right, um, I can say rectipolar. These are my inputs that become X and Y, and these would be what's passed back to me, M and P for magnitude and phase. I decided to change the phase into degrees, so I multiplied by 180 divided by pi. So if I run that, let's see if it works. Woo, success. 
There we go. I got uh, one one turns into square root of two, which is correct for magnitude and the phase is 45 degrees. There you go. I guess I could have done the pi over four thing too and done rational to see it was pi over four. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so you can do your own functions down here if you repeat them. Um, I don't have, let's see if I can find it. David might have a routine. I didn't pull up anything off the axes uh, command um, to show off. I think I did that in another more advanced lecture. Uh, pizza 2? Yeah, I think it was pizza 2 because I did a, a second one year. Um it would be, I know where it would be, um, open. Actually, I can come over here. This is actually nice. You notice there's also a current folder. Uh, intro pizza, that's the one we're working on. I think it was in this one. Well, I thought I could open it here. Usually you can, right? Uh, well, so much for that. It's there. Open. <laughs> uh, did I mention MATLAB puts out a new version all the time? All right. Um, there it opened. It opened in my other window. Um, here I got into polynomial evaluation, linear equations, and other stuff. Um, where did I do a plot? I know I went over this at one point, didn't I? Figure one, plot, 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 legend. Uh, this is figure one. Now, do I do have figure two? Let's see, find figure two. Uh, does that mean no? <laughs> uh, did I do it in this one? Did I skip it? Let me see if I skipped it. I think you did skip it. Oh, I did skip it. Hang on. I just skipped it. Let me bring it up. This is the one David wanted me to do. So let me pull this one up. Is this my intro pizza? Here we go. Intro to pizza. All right, let me put it down here. So I ended with the function, but after this, where did I do my plot? Right here. It's added up here. Okay, so this is figure one. Uh, instead of plotting this with a uh, regular plot, when you do discrete plots, MATLAB has got uh, its own little plotting routine called STEM, which actually looks pretty nice. Uh, you can do it with filled or unfilled. Here I labeled the axes, and here's what I, uh, let me run it and I'll show you the figure first. Okay, so here's figure one. Uh, I probably should change the font size, right? All right, let's get rid of that one. There, it's a little bigger. You should be able to see it. Anyway, so this is the plot of uh, the discrete signal we generated earlier. It's one, a half, a fourth, an eighth, a sixteenth, a thirty-second this way. Uh, the lines are actually pretty skinny. I should thicken those up a little bit. Anyway, you can say, and you can grab the pointer. This is a little more complicated, but you can grab the pointer off the graph. So this is kind of the graphics. So it kind of defaults to that. And then what you can say is ax dot font size is eleven. So I changed the font size to 11. It didn't really do that, did it? Uh, so if I get rid of this font size, that's probably why it just looks smaller. I can change it through this. So I think David's got a routine. You have a routine that just does this, right, David? Still there? Yep. I have a function, all that. I just um, call a function, like, you know, some general function, like function uh, graph or plot. Yeah, I think you call it pretty plot or something. Yep. Yeah, I always notice it's pretty plot. And he actually changed this is the font. You can change the font. I don't know what the font the font name is. Is it just font name? No, it's font size. Yeah, but you can change the font name too, can't you? I don't know. I, I think you, you I, always I, change I, it to I, Comic Sans. I, 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 I actually, I, believe it or not, I'm going to have to talk to is Dr. Baker's daughter, but it actually works out pretty well for the graphs. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, it actually looks pretty good. Font name. Yeah, actually, yeah. Do a ton. If you want to test that out for me, um, that'd be nice. 
Oh yeah, sorry. I'm like in and out with stuff. Sure, I, I was doing some grading for Dr. Baker. I just submitted them. Hooray. Hooray. All right, there it does. So I hear I changed the font size to 18, so I don't have to change them individually. You can change the font name to Comic Sans or Times. So I changed mine to Times. You can define the ticks on the Y. So here I defaulted that I wanted a little tick every one-tenth from zero to one. And I wanted ticks on the X axis, zero to five, every one, but I could have made that, um, it's just a vector. So I could have made the zero to a half and that would put them every half. See, all right, I turned does on it, the grid. Does yeah. it have to be a rational number? Can you do like zero to 10 with every, a ticket pi? Uh, yeah, cause on the computer pi is a rational number. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So there, there's no, there are no irrational numbers and <laughs> on the computer. Yeah. So there's pi. So I could have gone 0. Right. 0.1 times pi, which looks ugly uh, because of the pi, but I could have gone 0. 0.1. Yeah. So that's too many. All right, so you change it like that. You can turn the grid on. The grid just adds these little dim lines there on the major axis. Um, you can actually add smaller ticks. I forgot what they're called. You can put smaller ticks that don't get the grid lines. Um, I think you can pull it up on MATLAB. The GCA just basically it's a, gives you the graphics handle, current graph or chart. It's all here. So you can say AX is equal to GCA. I just kind of use the AX, but you don't have to. Um, font size, I'm not sure what tick DIR is, uh, tick length, I guess you can change the length. I've never thought of changing the length, um, the limits, I guess here they, uh, oh, tick out. That just means the ticks go outside the graph instead of inside the graph. <laughs> yeah. So there's stuff you can change that you probably never thought of changing. Um, <laughs> Uh, and there isn't a list. I don't know if there's a list of things. Um, graphics objects. Anyway, um, sometimes MATLAB's documentation isn't great. But anyway, you can do font size, font name, Y ticks, uh, X ticks, line width. Uh, so if I wanted to make that line a little wider, I made it 1.1. But to say you wanted to go to, let's say, 5 to thicken the lines up in case you're doing this remotely. There, thicker lines. Um, they I th they default to one, so two would be a little bit thicker than usual. Anyway, easy enough. That's about all I had planned for. Was there any any questions? Um, I had a question actually. I was wondering, sure. would it be possible? I see. All, now I'm looking at all the comments. Like rats are known to be rational. See, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, um, Google Meets kind of made it so that it pops up uh, in a small bubble when it's like actually typed, but it disappears in like two seconds. Uh, what what appears in a small bubble? The comments. Let's say if I if you're oh, looking here. at the yes, so okay, if I type in comment, it will just pop up as a bubble, and then it will disappear. Okay. Uh, I wasn't looking at that because I've got another couple sheets open, so I know what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> I need a third screen. Uh -huh. Me too. <laughs> so, uh, is there any way we could, uh, any way we could review any like higher level uh, material? Not in the sense that like a tutorial, but uh, just to get a feel of what actual industry code might look like, or what uh, what we might actually be dealing with later on. Uh, what are you asking? <laughs> Pretty much, if you've got anything cool. In a, in a sense, is uh, you know, it's it's limited in the in its capacity, I guess, so far. When we're just representing small signals, I'm wondering um, how it would translate into a real world real world application. I think it just depends on your application. Well, for me, I use MATLAB in um my practical research lab right here. Um, I actually use um communication systems. So there's this thing called uh. The IEEE seven eight eight code, I think it's what it's called, uh, GPIB. So um, there's two ways of using it. I can use a dedicated uh, GPIB controller and application, or you can use MATLAB. So I've been using MATLAB, and uh, I use that all the time for my work. So 
that's the the only crazy practical thing I've ever used MATLAB with, and it's um, literally a good great tool. I, I love MATLAB for a data um, data retrieval and recording and uh, manipulation. So that's what I do. But um, it just depends on the thing you would use it for. <laughs> Uh, I have a genetic algorithm here I run it for, which is kind of interesting. It's, I'm going to call it industrial, but um, it uses the parallel signal processing. It uses the parallel toolbox. You'll notice my, uh, actually, I just ran the temperature up. The temperature over here usually sits under 40. Um, this one runs a bunch of parallel processes. I don't remember which set of code this is. Let's see if it runs. Um I used to have plots so you could see the plots at the end of this to see what I was actually doing, but let's run it. It comes out with, but you can see my screen. You notice I got eight cores. You watch them just ramp up to close to 100%. <laughs> uh, you notice that the temperature went from about 35 degrees up to about 70. <laughs> my fans are just kicked in. Um, anyway, that just tells me I'm using all eight of the cores on it. Um this one's doing 300 runs. This one's doing 300 simultaneous runs. So each core is doing a run. I'm not sure how long it's going to take. Doing like infinite filters in the background? No, it's looking for... So and I, don't I, have, I, I, didn't, I didn't pull anything up. If I thought about it, I could have pulled one up. I've got one where I actually do plots so you can watch it. Uh, in real time? It, it, looks, it looks for minima is what it does. It's like if you get a really ugly plot of the graph. I don't know if this one plots anything either. So I didn't plan up anything up, but these are like really multi-dimensional functions that look really ugly. And then the concept is you're supposed to look for the minima. And the problem is, is these things are so ugly that they're hard to do. And usually you test these things out by doing like uh, a thousand runs and seeing how often it converges and how quickly it converges. Okay. Anyway, so, so you know, is that similar to that, uh, the story you were saying the other day about the uh, RF communication? that you were designing where you were looking for the one spot at which it would fail? No, that's stability. So, okay. <laughs> that's, that's a little different. No, that was, um, um, let me see here. I was thinking this thing would finish faster than this, but, uh, do, 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 do. selection average. Uh, don't really have anything else sitting here. I have one for my, uh, this is one I did with David last year. Did we do Butterworth filter last year? Oh, yes, we did. They're really cool. And I still have them here. Uh, yeah, this one, I'm not sure how this one's wrong. I, I basically set these up to run. Uh, is for, it the digital know, Butterworth? 20, 20 minutes until I was ready to to, to test it. I don't have ones with the graphs on here. 781? Oh, boy. Uh, let me run this one. This is. Oh, it is the final. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it right. right. Butterworth? Yeah. Yeah. So what the heck was this as idea? Oh, this is the filter quantized ideal. I don't remember what that picture is. Don't remember that. Here's the That's... step response of your filter. This is the impulse response of your filter. And the angle look. Oh, yeah. And this is the analog. So you design an analog prototype and then you converted it into this digital one. Correct? Yep. Yeah. So this was the frequency response of the digital filter. And I forgot the specs were, but uh, I think I made it. I think I made it a second order. It was pretty easy, so you could get yeah, through. second order. All right, and then I printed all the stuff here: the the numerator, the denominator, the scaling. Oh, that's right. You had to worry about overflow. I made you worry about overflow and yes, the, it was terrible. Yeah, so I calculate signal noise ratio? This is obviously this can't be the signal noise. Yeah, thirty two dBb sounds about right. Third that thirty two. That's good. Yeah, it's theoretical was thirty two point nine, and I got about thirty two point nine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so mine, mine turned out pretty well. Uh, let me see if I can find. I think the specifications for that Butterworth was supposed to be um, 0 dB to minus 2 dB at 100 radians per second. And the digital thing was somewhere, I don't remember. Uh, 0.1 omega? I don't remember. All right. I, guess I found the, uh, let me show you these. Um, these are the functions that you can kind of, this is just a website that has pictures of them. I can't know if you can see them very well, but, um, you have these types of surfaces and then your genetic algorithm is supposed to look for these, the minimum. This one's easy. It's kind of a hyperparabola. 
you can do it in multi dimensions. Like I, one of the common ones is up, up to like 35. Um, this one's kind of rotated. These are kind of easy. This one's a little harder because you notice you've got lots of local minima, but the global minima is down in the center here somewhere. This one has a global minimum off in one of the corners, but it's got a bunch of little local minima around. I had another website I'd have to dig up that has better pictures than this, but I don't remember where it is off the top of my head. All right, here's another one that looks like this, large, but if you get into the small details of it, it's a bunch of little spikes on the surface that make it hard for us to find an optimization. Um, this one is tough because it's flat out here and then it kind of dives into the center. So it's got a bunch of wiggles. This one's a mess because it's flat in the middle and it's got two spots you can dive into minima. These are awkward because it's got a bunch of local minima and you got to find the global one. That one's kind of boring. This one is the problem if you get stuck. It's kind of, they come up with these surfaces to try to break certain algorithms. So there's these search algorithms, like if you take a gradient, a derivative of the slope and you keep following the slope down is a common way to do that. The problem is if you do it on something like this, it's flat. So it just kind of hangs out on the surface and never really finds that little dip in the center. And that's just the dip blown up. So there's a bunch of those things. So that's what they, they find. And I was using it to try and find an optimal digital filter design. And it turns out that finding an optimal filter design is a lot tougher than solving these problems because I could solve all these problems. <laughs> anyway, so um, that, that was what that algorithm was running. I just I, And I had one that used to plot the surface and show you how it converged, but I'd have to dig it up, which would probably take me about 30 minutes. Yeah, no worries. I, that's cool. That's, that's oh, cool. Thank you for even showing me that. Yeah, actually, I do have... Uh, Hang on. I do. I know what I do have. I did have to do. I was thinking, yeah, I, I have to do this for a presentation coming up. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I actually have this done because I did uh, a presentation at the conference last year. Uh, triple E. There we go. Paper. Oh. I just have to find my. Here it is. I'll probably want to do keynote. Here we go. All right. Here's the services I use. So those are some of them. Those are the cost functions here. These are the minima. And this, I basically, this is how well my algorithm did. It took 40 iterations on average, 182. Uh, this is for two dimensions versus 35 dimensions. The first ones were fairly easy. Then there's this one, Rastigan's function. Basically, you come up with a function, you name it after yourself, and then you become famous. That's the um, dream. Yeah, so, yeah, it, yeah it's, yeah. <laughs> Just come up with a function, get a few people to throw it in the paper, and then people will add it. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, anyway, this one's kind of nasty. Um, PowerPoint is complaining at me because I opened this in PowerPoint. That's this is it. I, this is kind of a big picture. This is it up close. So you kind of know what the surface are. This one's flat. Some of these have that one's hard to get. That one's a little bizarre. Anyway, so I ended up doing mine for filter design. So the pink line. The pink line was my ideal filter and my my algorithm actually came up with the black line. So now I'm saying that my algorithm didn't come up with the black line with that 100% of the time. It was a rather low percentage. <laughs> Most of the time did not converge. Um, uh, da, 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 da. All right, if I initialized it, it converged actually quite a bit, 97% of the time. Um, but actually normally it only converged 15% of the time. So just giving it a blank slate saying design the filter, go, it only worked 15% of the time. If I cheated and used somebody else's algorithm to say, okay, I want a filter to do this, and then this is not what I want, but this is close. If I start it with that, then 97% of the time, it'll manage to find a convergence. Anyway, okay. so that's, that's what I used it for, and you kind of saw the code that was there. So, And there's other people, but it's mostly used for prototyping or systems work. Uh, and I had a Delta Sigma in here I'd modeled in a big feedback loop and you kind of run it and you get a, a frequency plot and you can kind of estimate signal to noise ratio and decide whether or not you want to build your electronics that way. It's kind of like the first step. So before you build like a, 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 an elaborate system, you need to verify that it's going to work. So you can put it in MATLAB, verify it works, and then you can go build hardware for it. Make sense? 
How do you get MATLAB to do the 3D plots? Oh, it's uh, Mesh. Mesh. Oh, okay. Mesh, or this is Mesh C because it put a contour plot at the bottom. Mesh or Mesh C. And I've, I've had, if, I had, if I known you wanted to see it, I would have found some code that had it. But, uh, yeah, you, so you can use it to plot. And that's what I did. Oh, I basically okay. took the MATLAB plots and shoved them into my presentation. I think these are the ones I use. Yeah. Anyway, I found out I converged 100% of the time in all these little test cases. Actually, designing a filter, though, was harder work. <laughs> that was one of my conclusions. Yeah, we had to get rid of these chef wheel functions and Gronky's function, all that, and just say design a damn IIR filter. <laughs> and if you can do that, <laughs> then you're good as gold. Nice. Uh, That's very cool. Thank you for pulling that uh, up. I appreciate no it. Problem. Any other questions I can sort of answer? David was using it for other stuff. Um, yeah, my son was just, he's an engineer. He's a engineer, but he's more of a software engineer these days. Uh, he was complaining about how the old guys like to use MATLAB and you can't generate a product that way. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I don't, I don't use it for a product. I'm using it to, you know, prototype my system to make sure my filter works right or I'm building a Delta Sigma correctly or, you know, I've got an algorithm that develops the, the coefficients on a filter correctly. I don't actually do end work on it. Yeah. So, I have uh, one more question. Sure. Uh, it's regarding uh, the integration between the uh, Simulink and MATLAB. Will we be, will we be able to um, kind of work? on those in UNLV courses? Uh, I do not have Simulink in my package here at home, so I can't run anything. So, oh, I, 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 and I, so I haven't used Simulink. It's a long story, but the first time Simulink came out, I bought it and learned it and tried using it. And then MATLAB did this wonderful thing. After two years, they decided that their product needed a whole new rework, so they actually shut it down for a year and then introduced a, new, introduced a new version of it, which was completely incompatible with the original version. <laughs> so all of my stuff was useless, and so I never really bought another package on it. <laughs> so I haven't used it in like uh, 20 years. It's probably been longer than 20 years. Yeah, I think I've used it, I think, two years ago, three years ago, and uh, uh, I keep updating, and it sucks. <laughs> yeah, just, just to warn yeah. you, because I do, I, it's funny, because people, yeah, a lot of engineers do like to use Simulink. And it's the best for controls. Yep. Uh, yeah, it, it's you can draw nice pictures and loop them and all that. And we were doing it for Delta Sigma, and I I I, I had my graduate students actually run the simulations using it blindly, as you would just plug it together, because um, there's a lot of engineers who just use it blindly like that. And so we did a a, a, a comparison between using uh, there's a number of ways to replace analog parts, and you can use. You basically take the Laplace transform and the S basically represents a derivative or one over S is an integral. And what you do is you, there's a bunch of numerical ways of doing integration and differentiation. So you can replace the S with all these different ways. So we looked at about three or four different ways of replacing the S numerically, like you would write it in code in a difference equation. And we compared it to Simulink. And uh, uh, we've published it in a couple of places, but it was interesting. We got some angry reviewers because there's some angry reviewers who like Simulink who was like, well, your Simulink results are bad, which I find hard to believe. You're obviously not turning on the right switches on Simulink. You need to get into the preferences file and turn on the following buttons, which, by the way, I think we already had. But it was the fact that, you know, the fact that I have to know, first of all, you have to know the accuracy of the system to know whether or not Simulink is meeting it. All right. So and the fact that I have to go click on buttons and it's supposed to change the accuracy tells me, well, is it more accurate before or after I click the buttons? <laughs> and as an engineer, you need to know that you can't say, well, it worked really well when I click these buttons and not that button. So we found we got more consistent revolt. We got really good, consistent results running MATLAB. We got inconsistent results running Simulink. So it's Simulink is, is one of those things that's nice graphically, but you just beware it may not give you completely accurate results, 
which I documented and which pissed off a, a reviewer tremendously, <laughs> which I guess he's a Simulink user, unless he owns MATLAB stock or something. <laughs> Maybe he worked at MATLAB and pissed him off. <laughs> no, um, yeah, so Simulink, Simulink has its ups and downs. You can do some quick and dirty stuff, but if you're trying to get into some detailed stuff, I recommend something else. Okay. Because you don't know. So, and, and I'd known this problem for years, so it's kind of funny that uh, when I did it, I just wanted to show that, you know, we were getting more accurate results here or less accurate results there. And so all of our results, since we were trying all these different numerical methods, all of ours were about in the same ballpark. And the only one that was really out of whack was Simulink. And it only worked like when we we'd put certain inputs into it or did certain clock frequencies, then it would fall apart. Mm. So it was accurate for some times and it wasn't accurate others. So you have to be aware. I always tell people you have to be smarter than the software because if the software really could do what you're doing, they wouldn't hire you. <laughs> and they would just draw it themselves and be done with it. So I'm always, I'm, I'm never trusting of other people's code. The, when the other people's code screws up, they're going to say sorry and you're going to get fired. So, um, but yeah, we do have Simulink on the computers at school and in 360D, they used to actually insist that everybody use it for uh, drawing block diagrams. So, and for most of the stuff we do academically, it probably works fine. All right, guys, I got to get out of here. I got an early morning tomorrow. Thanks, Ooh. Dr. Stubrud. It's only 8 o'clock night. Yeah, it's 8 yeah, o'clock. I got to be up at 4 a.m. He goes to bed early. Evidently. Uh -huh. yeah. Don't hate. See you guys. Yeah. Can, yeah. I, can I grab right. Have Respect a good night, Carter. time. Yeah. <laughs> See you. Any other fun questions? Um, I have a non-MATLAB related question. Sure. <laughs> it's actually a class-related question, and I meant to email you, but since you're here. Right. Um, you listed our 480 test as Monday the 21st. Is it still going to be Monday, or since we meet on Wednesdays, are you going to do it on Wednesday the 23rd? Um, you know, I was thinking about the other day, I'm thinking of moving it to Wednesday. I agree with that. But I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking because I think the, the 360 students have a test on Monday, so I want to be there Wednesday before their test. But let me verify that, and I need to post. Oh, I haven't posted that on your website yet. Let me put it, I'll post it on the webcam. Actually, should have actually just done it to the exam. Oh. I think 360 is on Monday. Okay. Oh, I think, yeah, I think it's... Oh, yeah, oh, I'm totally... Monkey. I'm totally down for a Wednesday the 23rd because my 460 okay. class, we only meet on Wednesdays. So I don't, I currently have no reason to go to campus on Mondays. Well, you would if I had a test. Exactly. And that's what <laughs> you would just mess up my whole week. <laughs> or you can all push 360 by two days. I'll, I'll take a look at it after this. I meant to, I meant to do that. I was going to post it and I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I'm, I just, could, I had my knee scoped and I've on business physical therapy three days a week. So, Oh, ouch. Oh. No, actually it feels good since they scoped it. So it was oh, ouch before. Good. Oh, ouch before. Yeah. yeah. They're like, so where does it hurt? I'm like, it doesn't except you hit, you hit the, you hit the incisions that hurt like hell, but it's pretty good now. Oh, that's oh, good. Gosh. So that should end in a couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, so I, I just spent my morning doing that. So and then getting ready for this. And then, so I'll look at that tonight and update you. All right, I did the 360 good. class. I haven't done the 480 class update. Okay. So we'll do Wednesday and probably Wednesday and then probably Wednesday because I got their test the following Monday. So we'll eventually have a Monday. Okay. We could feel free to put it off though. That's fine with me. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may put it off uh, two days. I was just thinking of that. So, um, all right. Are there any MATLAB related questions? <laughs> Somebody wanted to see wing dings. <laughs> um, wing fonts only. Uh, font, let's see. Wing dings. I wonder if I have it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's all symbols. It's like a higher mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'd avoid it. <laughs> so, do you have to like download each individual font? No, it came with a pack. I think as long as you have. Yeah, you have it installed oh. in your Windows. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it's all downloaded uh, by default. I don't know which ones. I know Comic Sans is in, or unless Dr. Stevie doesn't have it, I really don't know. 
I don't have it. I don't have it. It doesn't come standard with the Mac, so I do not oh, have it. Oh, the Mac. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, like, it's... Yeah, it's default with Windows. Yeah, see, it doesn't have... Uh, I'm not sure how you'd spell wingdings. I'd have to... I know Tiger is a font. I think it's wing and then D-I-N-G-S. Yeah, it's all one word. Uh, wing. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's doing it's gonna it. Look like an alien <laughs> He's code. doing it. I think I think I did, didn't I? Uh, I'm not even sure where to find my font library at the moment. Uh, oh, I think you should. Oh, there's a command that you can type. I think it's called font something. Uh, I don't remember. I was doing this as a presentation with the 360D students. Font map lab. There's a command. Uh, list I think font. it's called list font. List font. Uh, okay, just list font. Where is it? Where's my window? Yeah, list fonts. Uh, list font or fonts? Uh, fonts. All one word. Ah, uh, wingdings, webdings. I have webdings. Oh. Staff dingbats. <laughs> uh, I don't think I have comic sons. I got a ton of fonts. I just don't have. Yeah, you do, I think. Yeah, you do. Comic Sans. Yeah, Com Comic oh, Sans MS. There you go. Yeah, I didn't know I had to have the MS on it. Yeah, you have to have MS. All right. I, I just didn't know that. Okay, so I can put it in here, right? <laughs> Hooray. Welcome to the club. All right. There Holy. it is. Hooray. There you go. My life is now complete. <laughs> yep. That's one more. Welcome to the club. Yeah, I tried Comic Sans last time. I just I didn't think I spelled it as one word and didn't have the MS. What's the MS for? Oh, uh, Microsoft, I guess. <laughs> okay, I'll buy that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So now I it, got comic It stands for word. Mega Super because it's the best font. Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was my therapy. They've got W W B A T written there. And I'm like, what's that stand for? What a badass therapist. It's supposed to stand <laughs> for um something about I can't remember is it they basically they did, not, don't move anymore. They don't do anything that hurts is basically what it is. I forgot what it stood for. All right. So there it is. Comic Sans. I do have Comic Sans. I can join the club. Hooray. <laughs> yes. It actually doesn't look too bad. No, it doesn't. No, it, it actually it doesn't look terrible. So I don't know if I can do it. I wonder what it would look like down here if I had italic Comic Sans. Uh, We're entering uncharted territory now. Uh-huh. It's getting uh, even better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it didn't do much, I think, for the uh, for the italic, but uh, that's okay. Yeah. But it does have italic comic songs. Nice. <laughs> that's some fancy stuff right there. Yeah, you got it. It didn't. It didn't comic songs the pie. Uh, maybe because it's in LaTeX, I guess. I think I think it's because it's LaTeX. Yeah, I pulled it yeah, up. Yeah, I actually have to use a special uh, name for LaTeX. Sometimes, like if for I think title subtitles, um, I would have to put in interpreter LaTeX so that it would run LaTeX, and it's it's just so weird. <laughs> oh, is that what you have to do? Yeah, that's usually what I do because yeah, it... um, I don't put that, then it doesn't actually LaTeX. It just keeps everything like dollar sign or not dollar sign. Thing. All right. Yeah, with the slashes. Yep, All right. yep. Yeah, it's it's not a great LaTeX interpreter, but you can get your stuff in there. Just it's just just be aware that it's, it's don't don't plan on writing a, a paper in it. Just it's good for the titles and the sides, and that's about it. Yep, that's the first thing I try to teach uh, to the three C three sixty students so that I can like grade easily. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Label your blocks. Yeah, make my life easy. Yeah, my favorite one when I first got these back, I had 20 plots. Somebody just drove a staple through them. <laughs> <laughs> no title, no anything. I'm like, well, this one looks wrong. And then he comes back. No, no, no. See, this is part B. And I, I put them out of order. This is part C. And I'm like, okay, dude, you didn't label them. They're out of order. And you expect me to shuffle through them to find out the right order? What kind of OCPD engineer was that? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> yeah. It made perfect sense to him. So, all right, cool. We have any other questions? Uh, that's a nice guitar you have there, uh, Doctor Stewart. 
This is a cheapie. This is as cheap as you get. I was going to play this at the end of the last semester, but I never got the strings changed. Oh, you haven't? <laughs> Anyway, I wish you were here. Good, uh, wish you were here. Yes. Because <laughs> we were still in lockdown and I was going nuts. Yep. <laughs> I wish somebody was here. I'm tired of looking at this wall and <laughs> lecturing to nobody. Yeah, I remember when we were trying to do the uh, WebEx stuff, uh, you and me got the studio at like midnight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. We got it working. Uh, good old days. All right. Uh, I think I got all, right. all the comments here. Free pizza. Yeah, we covered that one. Band Comic Sons. There you found it. Band, yes, Band Comic Sons. That's the official website. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Band Comic Sons, huh? Uh, this is not it's not coming up on my web browser here. I don't know why. It says not yeah, I'm getting I'm getting Peel magazine. That's what I'm getting. Stickers Maybe because we're all part of the club, we we can't be a part of the if we're a part of the Comic Sans Club, maybe they're banning us from it. There. I uh, that'll be it. Yeah. i we obviously they've detected it on my screen and it banned me from the website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Any other well, questions? By the way, this is my, my my vacation shirt. I didn't go on vacation, so I bought a shirt from Hawaii. Nice. Oh, I see. Yeah, Very so nice. I can tell people. Yeah, I wanted to go. <laughs> just pull up a picture on your computer. I need, I need just one of the same. backgrounds with the palm trees. And I'm yeah. Gonna... Yeah, we're there. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Dr. Well, Stuburu. Yeah, thank You're you welcome. for your time, sir. Appreciate it. Yeah, this is my pleasure. All right, and for the remainder of the participants that didn't leave, um, if you didn't uh, sign up for the IEEE UNLV.slack.com, now is your, your time to do it. And uh, I would appreciate it if you go down to the uh, Student Involvement Center and sign up for yourself. Thanks for coming. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate Bye. It. Have a good night. All right, see you in class.